Hey guys, quick screencast on pivot tables. So what we have in front of us here is a spreadsheet listing employee data. And we have in the spreadsheet over 300,000 employee records. They list the employee's number, the, their date of birth, their first and last name, gender, hire date, the department they're currently working in, their current manager, and their current title. So given this amount of data, it would be very difficult to calculate by hand some of the totals that we might find in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a pivot table to actually do those calculations for us. So let's begin by looking at what our summary should look like. So for example, let's say we want to create a table and that table would have some sort of summary data in it here in the middle. So for instance, we might want to count something. So the question is, what do we want to count and how do we want to break it out? So let's say, for example, we're interested in how many people work in each department summarized by their gender. So for example, we might have female as a gender on the top and male as a gender. So we would have a column for each gender and then down the left side, we'd be interested in knowing what departments that they would be in. So it would be department one, two, three, four, and so on. So once we know what the pivot table has to look like or what the summary table has to look like, then we can go and build the pivot table. So we'll do this by going back to our data, selecting the entire sheet, going to the insert tab, and the first option is a pivot table. So it offers to create a new table from a particular range and either put it in an existing worksheet or a new one. We're gonna create a new sheet and we're gonna click OK. And what you get is this screen here. The pivot table will be built in this box here. The options for building it are done over here on the right. Now really quick, let's refer back to our high-tech drawing here. Notice we have on the left side, each of the rows represents a department. On top, each of the columns represents a gender. And in the middle, each cell represents the count for a department and a gender. So using this as a model, we'll go back and make our selections. So you'll notice in the bottom right, it has rows, columns, and values. Those correspond to the rows in the summary, the columns, and then the values correspond to the middle of the table. So we want each of our columns to represent gender. So we're gonna grab the gender field and drop it into the columns. You'll see that it adds a column for each of the genders and for where it's left blank. Next, for each row, we would like a department. So we go find current department and drop it into the rows area. And now it has a row for each department and a column for each gender, but there's nothing in the table. It's because we have to go down here and fill this area out to say what we're summarizing. Now, if you think about it, for each department and each gender, we'd like to count something. Uh, what is it we'd like to count? We could count the employee number. Um, we could count the birth dates, the names, or what makes the most sense is we could count the gender. And when we drop this in here, by default, it automatically does a count of that item. So here we go. Here's our result for the gender uh, summarization by department. What we'd like to do, though, is clean this up a little bit first. So let me go ahead and make this comma separated numbers. We'll get rid of the decimal places. We'll make everything right justified so it looks good. And here we go. We've got for customer service, we've got 8,712 employees uh, that are female, 13,101 that are male for a grand total of 21,813. So this has just been a quick introduction of how to create a pivot table. 